In this video, we're going to look at the Polar interface, and Polar stands for Performance Oriented Loop Audio Recorder, and it's basically a really fun little device within Digital Performer that allows you to loop record audio to RAM, so you can loop and overdub all in real time. So in this video, we're going to look at the interface, and we'll put it to work in the next video. We can get to it by using the shortcut Shift-P, or from under the Studio menu here, under Polar. So let's look at the interface. Now, the first thing that you're going to see is the meter jumping as I'm speaking, and that's because I have the input already set to the input that my microphone is plugged into. But let's start at the beginning. We have a memory used display at the top here, and this shows how much RAM Polar is using, and it's good to quit other apps or increase the RAM in your computer. Do whatever you can to get as much RAM available for Polar to use if you want to do a lot of loop recording. Now, the important thing to understand is that the length of each pass, and that's the term that we use in Polar, where we record in passes, the length of each pass is determined by the memory cycle and the memory start and end points that we set within Digital Performer. So there's no real pass length of its own within Polar. It's only based on what's set here. So I've set my memory cycle on here, and I've set the end point to bar 1 and the end to bar 8, so I would record in 8-bar passes the way it's currently set up. The other thing is we can turn on the link button over here to link playback to the main transport. And this is useful if you want to use Polar to loop record and at the same time listen to some other audio that you may have in your sequence editor. Maybe you want a drum loop or whatever, a bass track, and you want to record along with that. You want to link that so that it's linked to the timeline or the time ruler within Digital Performer. And when that's off, it'll be on its own and working independently of the transport here. So that'll link it up to the transport, but the record button over here is always independent. And you can punch in and out freely while things are playing by just dropping in and out of record with that button or an associated key command. So next thing we need to do is choose the input and output. So I have my physical input analog one set here, and that's why we're seeing the meter jump here. It's kind of like record enabling a track, but what we can do is record with effects if we want. And what I can do is Let's say I have a track set up here. I can output it to a bus, and I can put effects on the track or on the bus and then record to that bus as the input. So it's not just physical inputs, but we can record from buses and therefore print effects, basically record them wet. And we can also record hearing effects, but not printing them if we place effects on the output. So we select the input here, and we select the output here, stereo or mono, and again, we can output to a bus or a physical output. And we can put effects on here, and in that case, we would hear the effects as we're recording, although the material would actually be recorded dry. So two different ways of working. So as we're working in Polar, the main waveform display shows the current pass that we're recording into, and that's over here. And when we're recording, you'll see the waveform being drawn. And it's also displayed at the top of the pass list here. Each pass is created here in this list, and it grows as you keep adding passes. And each pass has its own volume and pan control and mute button. Let's create a new one. Just like that. There's a new blank pass. There's the number of it. We can mute by play enabling it or not. And there's a group number of volume and a pan offset. And again, we'll see an overview here when we actually record into it. Now, there are two ways to record into Polar. We can do it manually or based on the trigger gate. So if we go manually, basically we're going to record and we have to actually create a new pass and hit record and do it manually to create new passes each time. But if we want to sort of loop record and create new passes each time, we can use this trigger by record gate. And this records whenever the gate is triggered. And we use this for creating new passes on the fly if you're not sitting at your keyboard. You want to do it, let's say, in front of a mic or with a guitar around your neck. And these settings pertain to how the gate works and how it's triggered. We have an attack preservation time where we can set a user-defined value there. And this is kind of like a precursor to the new punch guard feature in Digital Performer 8 where... When you're recording and when you're in Polar, if you miss the attack of a note or it's a bit truncated at the beginning, you can pull the file back once you export it into Performer and it'll preserve some of the data that's been captured before the actual recording starts. And release determines how quickly it stops recording once the threshold is not reached anymore. And here's the recording gate threshold, the important one, at what level this kicks in and starts recording a new pass. Now, there's a couple of different scenarios in how you might want to use Polar. One way of doing it is to loop record to get the best take of, let's say, a solo or something. And in that case, what you want to do is enable this mute previous passes so that you're not hearing the previous pass each time a new one's being recorded. And that way you can just solo over the same section 
or whatever part you're trying to lay down and just go until you get the take that you like. So as you're recording multiple passes, they'll grow here. You'll get additional passes. I'll just create a couple of new blank ones now just to show you how they work. Now we can shift click to select multiple ones like that. And once they're selected, we can delete them if we want. There, we can clear them. And collapse is a word that kind of means merge. So if we have a bunch of them, we can collapse the meaning merge them into one pass. There was no data in any of these, so it's not really relevant, but that's what it'll do. So we have mute, volume, and pan, and we have groups. Now, grouped passes allow us to adjust the mute settings, the volume, the pan, collapsing, exporting, deleting them all together as one when they're grouped. And there's a couple of options for how we want to work with groups. We can assign new passes to a specific group manually here for recording in manual mode. We can do that and then just type in a number and let's say I type in two there and I'll go new. We'll see that's part of a new group now. I'll do another one like that. And now maybe I want to have another one that's, there's group four, I just moved my mouse up. There's a couple that are in group four. So you can do it manually like that. Or if you're recording like this in loop mode where you want to keep going over and over again, you can have an auto increment group function here where each new pass will go up one group number. Or you can just leave it off and just record everything in the same group. So it's really just about if you want to be able to treat them all together for playing, muting, volume, panning, collapsing, exporting, etc. So once we've got everything recorded in here, the idea is to then export it. And we can either export it into Digital Performer or just export it as standalone audio files. And we can even save the Polar session and open this up again to continue working at it at a later time. So before we hit the export button, we want to look at the options here. So in this options, we have a few choices to make. We can export either as mono, stereo, or best fit, meaning Polar will determine on its own. And when we export it, we can do nothing. We won't import it into Digital Performer and it'll just get stored on your hard drive. Or we can add it to the Sound Bites window. Or we can add it and have it create new tracks all at the same time and name them based on the name that we have here. Polar is the default one, but let's say I called it EK Looping, for example. We can do that and it would export them to tracks with those names. So we can create individual sound bites for each pass if we're exporting multiple passes. And if not, it's going to merge them all together or to use the right terminology, collapse them all together. We can use the volume and pan settings that we've set here so we can preserve that. And we can export only selected passes if we want to export only some of them. And here's where we choose the folder that we want the files to be created to. And by default, it defaults to the audio files folder within your project folder, but we can change the location. So once we're done, we can hit export or we can just go OK like that to save those settings and then just hit export from here. So let's try it. I'll hit export and there's the new Polar 1 track. And if we look in the sequence editor, we'll see there's the EK looping out soundbite that's been collapsed or merged and exported. So let's just go back here real quick. And when we close this, we'll be prompted to save the Polar session if we want to or not. So if you save it, you'll have it stored on your hard drive and instantly accessible later on when you reopen Polar and just use the load button, you'll be able to bring it back in. So you can save it by hitting that button there or save as or just close it and you'll be prompted. And one final thing to be aware of, Polar works great when you remote control it with key commands. So if you just hit Shift L and open up your commands window, you'll see that there's a whole Polar section over here and all of these functions can be assigned either MIDI commands or keyboard commands so that you can remote control this away from your computer keyboard. Stay tuned. In the next video, we're going to put Polar to work.